Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 256. Please turn to it, page number 256, and today is our lesson number 63. We have been solving problems from the first practice test. We have already done all the exercises, all the math exercises that is, uh, that were on page number 50 through 110 on day 1 through 60. I'm assuming that you have already watched those videos and you have done the exercises beforehand. Number 6. A symphony has 125 musicians. Alright, so we have a symphony. In number six, and we are told it has 125 members. They go on to tell us that uh, 75 of them are women. All right, so 75 of them are women. That's a five. That's a pretty atrocious looking five. And what is the question asking? Which of the following is the ratio of men to the total musicians in the symphony? This is a simple ratio question. Listen very carefully. This is a very simple ratio question. The only reason why people get this, these kind of questions wrong is the lack of attention. It happens to everybody. Lack of concentration. Make sure you pay attention to what is being asked. Here they are looking for the ratio of men to total. They are not looking for the ratio of men to women or women to men. Or women to total, they're looking for men to total. There are four different ways they could have asked the question. They could have asked us the ratio of men to women, women to men, men to total, or women to total. Here they're looking for ratio of men to total. We have to figure out the number of men in the symphony, which is very straightforward. If there are 75 women out of a total of 125 men, there would have to be 50 men. So it's simply 50 over 125. Let's divide top and bottom by 25 because there are two 25s and a 50 and there are five 25s and 125 because 100 has four 25s so 125 it stands to reason that it should have five 25s so that's it two fifth is the answer the ratio is two to five now on the other hand if they had asked us what percentage of the symphony is men we would have done the same work except at the end we would have realized that two fifth is same as Except at the end, we would have realized that 250 is the same as we divide, multiply top and bottom by 2, and we find that it is the same as 4 over 10, and that would have been 40%. You have to know your fifths, you have to know your tenths. We, learn, we have learned all of that stuff as well. Anyway, so they are not looking for they are not looking for percentages, they are looking for the ratio, and the ratio is 2 fifth. The ratio is 2 fifth. The very first answer, the answer is A. Number 7. Number seven. A student decides to have a lunch at the school deli. All right. The special for today is a hamburger basket. Oh, very nice hamburger basket. Which includes fries for seven six dollars and ninety-five cents. All right. So we have fries for six dollars and ninety-five cents. We have a salad, we are told, for $2.45. And we have a drink for $1.49. And finally, we have a brownie for $1.19, of course. No school lunch will be complete with the proper dose of sugar brownies do you understand? yummy this is the reason why we see so much obesity anyway that's the lunch the kid is going to buy at the school are we going to sit, sit here and waste our time adding up all the nickels and dimes and pennies as always we, I ask you the answer is no we're going to round things up so $6.95 is $7 
salad is $2.45, we're going to round it up to $2.50. Drink is $1.49, we're going to pretend it is $1.50. And the brownie is $1.19, I'm going to pretend that it is $1.20. So this 50 and this, this 50 and this 50 and this 50 is $1. So $1 and $1.20, so there's a 20 there and $1. And we have well, 7 plus 1 is 8, 8 plus 2 is 10, looks like $12.20 to buy this rubbish. $12.20. That's your answer. Now we look at the answer choices. We round things up. We always round things up. We do not waste our time adding up, as I always remind you, adding up all the nickels and dimes and pennies. That takes an inordinate amount of time. Now we look at the answer choices and depending on how the answer choices are laid out, we may or may, we may, or we may not have to uh, do anything. We may be, in most cases the answers, answers are far enough apart that we should be able to look at the right answer. Once in a while they are not, we'll see. i oh, blast it, look at that. The answer choices here are 1089, 1199, 1189, 12.08, 1208 and 1220. Obviously, it's not 1220 because 1220 is the answer that we got after we did the approximation. The question is not asking what's the approximate of the uh, uh, approximate cost of the lunch. Question, question is asking us how much does the lunch lunch cost? Which of the following is the cost of the lunch, not the approximate cost of the lunch? They're looking for precise answer. So this is not the answer, obviously. So now we have to ask ourselves what sort of approximation did we do? And that in this case actually should be very straightforward and I'll tell you why in this case it should be very straightforward. Because you see here it was $2.95 we pretended it was $7 so we are overestimating. Here is $2.45 we pretended it was $2.50 again we are overestimating. $1.49 we rounded to $1.50 we are overestimating. Here also we are overestimating. Which means the, the actual cost is not this but slightly under that. Just slightly under that. And slightly under this amount to the amount that we're getting here. But then again, as you look at it, this is almost $12 and this is $12.08. This is still too close to each other. So we're going to take a few extra seconds to do the adjustments. Okay, This is how we do the adjustment. Pay attention. And this is not something we have to do very often. This is once in a while uh, kind of things. So here is $6.95. This is $7. So we, we counted a, a nickel extra. Again, it's $2.45. We counted it as $2.50. Again, we counted an extra nickel. Here it is $1.49. We counted it as $1.50. We counted an extra penny, and again, this is dollar nineteen for the brownie. We counted that as dollar twenty. We counted another penny extra. So we we overcharge. We overestimated the cost of the lunch by twelve cents. So that tells us that the actual amount is not twelve dollars and twenty cents, but it's twelve dollars and twenty cents minus the twelve cents that we overestimated. So you subtract twelve cents from from this one, and you should get. Well, if you subtract twelve cents from twenty, we'll get twelve dollars and eight cents. Voila, $12.08, just like we said, $12.08 right here. That's all. But doing the adjustment should not take that long. It go, uh, the process goes very quick because in the real exam, of course, you're not going to write everything out. You just look at it. Thus, we are off by five cents, we are off by another five cents, we are off by a penny and off by a penny. A nickel or a nickel and a penny and a penny, you're off by 12 cents. Just subtract 12, 12 cents from your amount that you came up with when you did the rounding and you will have the precise answer. That's all. What number was that? That was number seven. Let's do number eight then. I'll get out of the way for a second. In number eight, in question number eight, We do what is known as reconciliation of an account, which we did before in the exercises, if you recall, on day number 20 and day number 21, we did similar questions in the event that you want to watch them again. So when you're doing the reconciliation of the account, the key there, the most important part is to keep your debits and credits separate. Don't mix them up. Don't go around saying this is this is a plus, this is a minus, this is a plus, this is a minus. Don't do that. Keep all your debits and all your credits separate. So the money coming in the account and the money going out of the account. Keep the two separate until the very end and then just uh, look at your total credits and subtract from it the total debits and that's it. That's all it is. So here is our, here is our total credits. What 
for this particular one, we are told that the beginning balance, the beginning balance is two thousand three hundred and fifty-five dollars and fourteen cents. We are also told that the deposits were made in the amount of fifteen twenty-seven twenty-eight. We were also told that we earn interest. Interest earned, we are told, was dollar fifty. I'm not going to write that as dollar fifty. We're going to write that as two dollars. We're going to write that as two dollars because the other fifty cents that you see there will will just ignore the twenty-eight and will ignore the fourteen. You understand that that twenty-eight uh, twenty-eight cents and a fourteen cents, that twenty-eight cents and a fourteen cents will approximately make up for the fact that we are counting this as two dollars. That's it. Those are the total credits. Just add them up. Just add them up. And we get seven plus two is nine. Nine plus five is fourteen. Four carry one, and we get five plus one is six. Six plus two is eight, and then we get eight again. Three plus five is eight, and then three. Looks like three thousand eight hundred eighty-four dollars is the total credit. The money coming in the account. Now let's look at the money going out of the account, and that's typically the checks that you write during the course of the month. Uh, minus the, any any service fee that you may have to pay, and once in a while you will see if you bounce a check or something, the the the, the bank might uh, charge you some additional fees. But you will have the service charge typically, and you will have uh, all the checks that you wrote. That's all. So here are the debits, and we are told that the checks written. Checks written were in the amount of one thousand two hundred and three dollars and ninety-seven cents. What the hell? We're going to pretend that is one thousand two hundred and four dollars. And then we have a service charge. Service charge is five dollars exactly. Again, if service charge happens to be four dollars and fifty cents or something, just round things out. Do you understand? Don't make your life miserable. So that's nine. Zero two one. That's all there is. Twelve hundred and nine is the total debits. We just subtract the debits from the credits. That's all. Let's see what we get. Fourteen minus nine, and uh, this is going to be fourteen minus nine is going to be five, and this eight will become a seven. Seven minus zero is zero. Or uh, seven minus uh, zero is seven. Eight minus two is six, and three minus one is two. Looks like at the end of the month we'll have two thousand six hundred and seventy-five dollars as our ending balance, and that's what they were looking for. Six thousand, two thousand six hundred seventy-five. Let's look at the answer choices. I see six thousand or two thousand six hundred seventy-five as answer choice A, which is off by a penny. All the other answer choices that you see there, the next answer choice that you see there is six hundred seventy-one dollars and eighty-nine cents. You're not going to you're not going to be off by 189 cents, the same as two dollars. So answer choice B says, let's write down the answer choice as, as we appear. This is A. B says 6,271.89. Six, 6,271.89 is the same as 672. C says 678. And D says. Six hundred eighty-five. What I'm trying to make you understand is this part. What, what we are trying to understand here is that the mere fact that we are just rounding these two figures here, fourteen cents and fifty. All we have done here, all we have done here is that we have pretended that fourteen cents plus twenty-eight cents is approximately fifty cents. That approximation should not result in a difference of dollars. These are all dollar amounts. We came up with two thousand six hundred seventy-five dollars. It should not all of a sudden be off by three dollars. We came up with seventy-five dollars. It should not be off by another three dollars. It's going to be off by a few pennies, which is exactly what we found. It was off by one penny. The answer is A. The answer is A. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye now.